The first challenge we face when we're trying to self-care at, self at home is the shape of teeth. Um, they're kind of a rounded shape so that it deflects food away from the chewing surface um, and away from the gums, but the same problem happens when we're trying to brush our teeth. When we brush from the top down or we're aiming straight at the tooth, the bristles jump right off of here and hit about here down and don't take care of the most important place uh, that we need to clean, which is up under the gums. Most people think the gums are attached right here, but it's actually further up. So where we brush our teeth is about one to two millimeters deep, and where we floss is about three millimeters deep, and this is where we need to be cleaning every day. So I've come up with a way of toothbrushing manually that uses a typical straight bristled brush like this. Um, in the front, I want the bristles to be split and then just kind of tilt it up into the gums and do a gentle jiggle and just move around the teeth that way. What this does is makes the bristles curve around the teeth and go up under the gums and gently break up the plaque that's under there. Uh, in the back, it would look like this. So you're coming across the top and you're brushing across the back surface. When you're ready to clean the outside, you don't turn the toothbrush at a 90 degree angle because again, that would miss the under the gum line part that you're trying to get. You keep across the top and you just tip a few bristles down and you jiggle it gently and then you come to the inside and jiggle it gently. Traditionally, dental schools teach us a technique called the bass technique, which means you come at a 45 degree angle from the outside and jiggle it and then roll up. But what I find is that most people, um, because they've been brushing since they were three years old, then they come at this angle to the tooth, which is definitely wrong, they are going to slip back to that technique very easily. So again, just try to slip a few bristles down either side and that'll help guide you to the um, little pocket that you need to be cleaning out. A lot of people wouldn't dream of giving up their electric toothbrushes, so they asked me about the Sonicare. And I understand that. Electronic toothbrushes are wonderful. However, the shape of the Sonicare is not a shape that works for my technique very well, but it can be adapted to using my way. Uh, the problem with it is that it's got two dips in it, and so if they're tipping over into the teeth, they're only going to have three points that get up under the gums. So. Um, what I think about this shape is it encourages people actually to brush at 90 degrees into their teeth and that's what I'm trying to get away from and I don't think it works very well on the inside either where it's an inside curve. So let's take a second and look at how I would adjust this for use in a person's mouth. Again, it's very much like what is taught in the dental school. You just have to be more cognizant of what you're doing because you can't spill the bristles over into the sides. What works really well with um, the Sonicare is to bring the brush in this way and, and just kind of come in almost vertically to the tooth on the inside and then to the outside like this. You can see there's a slight tilt to it, but you can't really take the bristles and split them in half and go each way because it's such a short brush that it's not likely to get all the way down under the gum line as you can see in this video right here. However, if you come in like this and just move along slowly it will do an excellent job for you. What you can't do is come in at 90 degrees to the tooth. A lot of people express their concerns to me that they are going to be pushing the bacteria down into the gums or they're going to push their gums down. When you push the gums down we call that recession and generally that's actually a result of clenching the teeth. A lot of people think it's due to something else, but clenching puts a lot of pressure that causes that to happen. Um, as far as pushing the bacteria into the gums, they're already in there. All you're doing is going in there gently, breaking them up and helping them uh, to loosen and be washed out of the pocket by the natural flow of the fluids that uh, pump out through the gums. So remember, all we're trying to do is break up a germy biofilm and once you've broken it up you don't even have to worry about scooping it out yourself. Again the liquids that are being oozed from the gums will help move that on out. 
Flossing is people's biggest challenge. Um, most people actually prefer to use the flossers that are out today. My favorite happens to be the Johnson & Johnson Reach Flosser. I like it because it has a long handle that's big enough for adults to hold on to. The other thing I like about it is that the flossing angle is at 90 degrees. That works really well for flossing the back teeth. What I tell people to do is to floss by teasing it in between the back teeth rather than pushing it straight up and popping it in and that's usually more comfortable. Then right after it pops into the tooth you pull forward a little bit, go up and down about five times vertically on the tooth in front, you come back down, go around the tissue and push back on the back tooth and go up and down about five times. Of course plaque being as sticky as it is it takes a number of repetitions to floss adequately. I also um, like it because some people are very upset about having to use a lot of plastic and throw it away. So there's very minimal plastic used in one of these flossers. These tips just pop on and off and so it's pretty easy to use. I personally still like to floss with uh, my fingers using them as anchors. So what one would do is tear off a fairly lengthy piece of floss so you have plenty of room to uh, manipulate the floss. What a lot of people tend to do, they're self-taught and they'll wrap it around the knuckle of their second or their index finger. So when that happens, uh, then they will use their third finger, which is not quite as dexterous or independent as their index finger to floss, and they'll go ahead and, and use this finger, but they get a natural stop, so it's difficult for them to reach the back of their mouths. And uh, what they think they're doing is often not what's happening. So what I recommend is that instead they use as an anchor finger their middle finger and wrap it around the knuckle of your middle finger and then just use your index fingers. I leave a space of uh, about the width of a teeth of a tooth and uh, use both index on the bottom. I start in the back and move forward and for the top I use a thumb to the side that I'm doing. So if I'm doing my right hand side I use my right thumb and I start in the back because it's a lot easier to slip these fingers into the back and move forward rather than start forward and try to move back into the cheek muscle. Again use about maybe a half inch of space in between your fingers. A lot of people leave a huge amount of space there and as they tease it in it's really hard to uh, force it in because they're not able to get the force right up next to the tooth and also when they're starting to actually floss they have to use large movements to accomplish what it is they're trying to do. So the only time you're ever flossing horizontally is when you're trying to tease it in between the contacts. Once you're in between the contact you're wrapping it in a C-shape and going vertically up and down the tooth. So when we floss, what I typically do is do not come in from the top and push down and pop it through because that hurts the gums. I'll come in sideways, I'll tease it a little bit until it's through, then I'll wrap to one side, go all the way under the gum, you can see that going under, and go up and down about five times, come up to the top, and go down to the other side. You don't have to mangle the tissues, you're just going in there trying to scoot out the plaque from under the gums. And that's what it takes. Plaque is very, very sticky, so it takes several repetitions to do it. Again, it's not just individual bacteria that we're moving out. Uh, plaque is made up of about 50% germs and 50% uh, sticky glue that they make to uh, keep out all kinds of um, antibiotics in the body's immune system to help fight it. I hope I popularized the use of ozonated oil uh, for home care. While it doesn't have the ability to get under the gums the way flossing does, it's a nice adjunct for people who cannot or will not floss, and it has some benefits of its own. For one thing, it kills all microbes. It doesn't just go against bacteria, but it goes against viruses and fungi as well. The other thing it does is it can alkalize the area. And most of the 
pathological germs actually love an acidic environment. So if, if we can alkalize the environment, then we're making it more hospitable to the good germs who actually do thrive in an alkaline environment. The other thing that it does is um, when we clean teeth, what we're doing in the dental office and at home is to try to keep the anaerobes from being too deep under the tissues. And a lot of, for a lot of people that means the tissues have to reattach to the tooth. And they do that with something called fibroblasts. In my book I call it a uh, Velcro-like attachment. So there are little fibers that need to grab onto the tooth and what the ozone does is it can make them proliferate. So it's a wonderful adjunct. My favorite uh, right now is O3 Skin Care. And I like it because it uses jojoba oil, which has some healing prob uh, has some healing benefits of its own. But it also uh, tastes a little bit better than the highly ozonated olive oils that you'll find on the market. And I've also double checked their machine so that I know that it isn't producing compounds that are detrimental to health. You know, it has to be medical grade ozone, or excuse me, medical grade oxygen, as I've explained uh, elsewhere. And um, the whole machine has to be hardened against the uh, highly reactive ozone itself. So, this is one of my favorites, but there are others out on the market. One of my favorite uh, ways to apply the ozonated oil in between teeth are these wonderful little uh, gum soft picks put out uh, and available in most stores. So what I do is uh, break off one of the little picks and where we hold it uh, with our fingers to apply it, we go ahead and just use that to dip into the ozonated oil and I take about oh, a quarter of a pea size out for my uses, and then I'll put it at the edge of a Dixie cup or a plate or something like that. And then I'll take the other end and I'll just put a little bit of ozonated oil on it. And again, I like the jojoba oil. It tastes a little bit better than the olive oil. And I'll start placing it in between my teeth. So nothing could be simpler than using these plaque picks with ozonated oil. I just load it up and gently rub it in between the teeth. There are places where it won't go, and I don't force it into those places. It really does work better in back teeth. Uh, so that's where most people find it most handy. But I usually get it in between all my teeth. If you have a place uh, where the brush goes that needs it, what you need to use is a little stimulator tip. And I put a little bit of ozonated oil on that, and I'll just rub it under the gums like that. Rarely is it on a front tooth. And sometimes if you have a deep pocket in the back, this can also be aimed at the tooth and get in between the tooth and gum to force it in there. I was so concerned about going into braces because I thought I would have to depend on only the ozonated oils to help clean in between because flossing is so difficult in braces. But I was really happy to find a product called Plackers, and they have an orthodontic flosser that I found very easy to use. Um, basically, it's like the flosser I explained earlier, but one of the sides is very, very small. And so what you can do is uh, slip it up under the braces, and it works fine. I hope this video has helped answer a lot of questions that people have had about how to take care of their teeth and mouths at home.